Well, hello friends. Welcome back to another Decorate With Me. I'm Alessandra, and today we have another Bridgerton-inspired episode. And today's inspiration actually comes from the Queen's Garden Luncheon. It's not really a ball, but it's more just a party luncheon. And there's some really great inspiration photos this week to share because this was actually an episode that got a lot of coverage in the behind the scenes because apparently these gardens are actually some of the royal gardens and the trees I guess the cherry blossom trees that you see here I guess are not naturally existing in this environment which makes sense um, but apparently the crew had to bring them in and I thought oh that's interesting so these trees aren't even supposed to be in this garden but it, nevertheless, this is one of the aerial shots that we see. Uh, this is the queen's tent quarters, if you will. There's some food here. There's some musicians over here. Uh, a great, great um, color palette here. Uh, and it was actually a very interesting color palette because I think, if I understood, they brought these, I thought it was these big cherry blossom trees that they brought in. Um, but it's interesting because they have the pink, they have this kind of odd orange color, then there's this kind of like orange creamsicle color, if you will, back here. But then um, like the floral here that we see is creams and like an even more diluted uh, orange. So it's kind of an interesting mix of colors. But um, this picture, I think is probably my most favorite pictures that I pulled for inspiration pictures because one, we have Queen Charlotte, and she's obviously a snazzy, sassy lady, and I adore her character tremendously. And she's wearing a striking purple, which I'm not normally a big fan of purple, but I think it's just a really great color combination here. We also see this elaborate food spread here with the macaroon towers. Uh, this is going to be clear towers, fruits, um, which to us were kind of like, whatever, no big deal. You can get grapes almost year round at any grocery store. But back then, you know, that they had to be imported. And it was kind of like, if you guys ever heard the story about the pineapple and how they used to put pineapples on display to be like, ooh, look how fancy we are. And people legit rented pineapples to be like, hey, look, we have exotic fruit. But anyways, this is also a, a great color story here as it is because we have the golds, the purples, the white in the tent. We see some of the stripe detailing. We see a lot of things like this where it's like that kind of camel color here. Uh, and then again, the floral arrangements, creams, blush, kind of the creamsicle orange. And then I found this little gem of a picture. Uh, just It was just happened to be in the background, but these are some of the urns that we see here. Urns, floral, lots of foliage, lots of boxwood we see here. We see the big sculpted wall hedge here. And so this shot in particular, I realize is very similar to what we just saw. But I did not notice this until I read this, but I think it was Architecture Digest that I found this particular shot from. Apparently, they shot this scene in the wintertime before the last frost date. And in this shot in particular, it's super obvious, but there is frost on things. And apparently they had to go in before they started shooting and defrost all of their foliage and whatnot that they put in because there was frost on everything. And I thought, huh, how about that? So just a little fun fact. Okay, as always, I like to start with the color palette. And I going back to this picture, which is my favorite, we have these luxe uh, kind of goals, but they're kind of more in the they're gold, but they're not that obnoxious gold, so they're kind of, uh, there's some lighter golds, there's the, I'm going to call it the camel gold, there's the biscotti, it, you know, different shades of that kind of medium gold, it's not too yellow, um, it's almost, it's not quite antique gold, because uh, that tends to lean a little bit darker, uh, and then the peach and the blush, uh, we see a little bit of it here and there in the cookies and some of the spreads, but that's more found in the the um, foliage and some of the florals that they have and then the eggplant slash grape slash orchid depends which um, <laughs> which one you want to google and search for uh, this purple uh, is mostly honestly just because Queen Charlotte was wearing it and I thought you know it's in the macaroons it's in the grapes I kind of like the contrast in the combination of these and you don't need a lot of the purple to make an impact like obviously she's really the only purple that we see here but obviously it's very high impact 
So why are we talking about the color palette? Well, it's good to have a general idea when we're starting out a design so we know loosely where we want our color story to uh, go and if we ever need a reference this is this is where we can go back and go yep this is kind of the direction we wanted or no we're going to change the direction and that's that's perfectly fine if you change your mind so what are we calling this i'm calling this a luncheon in the real garden uh with lots of golds purples and subtle neutrals but this wonderful uh, event that we see here the queen's luncheon is a great representation of something not in a ballroom that we see um, because that's where most of the parties are happening in Bridgerton there's a few nighttime events that are outside but not really a whole lot and I thought this is a nice spring luncheon uh, obviously the gardens are here in full bloom and so why not keep going with the tents because a tent is a very real possibility for a party whether it's in your backyard on your property at a hotel um, at a local uh, venue that happens to have some nice outdoor space. Tents are very real possibilities when you're throwing a luncheon, a party, a wedding, whatever. So I looked at my local vendors and I'm in Central Florida so I have a lot of options. And I'll leave down below who I referenced here if you're in the area and if you need recommendations. But look at your local suppliers for rentals, see what kind of tents they have. Mine happened to have these higher peak tents, which I thought were nice. And this is his one of their pictures just straight off their website. And I was like, actually, you know, they're really not that separately different from what we're seeing here in the uh, the TV series versus what we're seeing here in real life per se. And again, this is his picture in front of a hotel in a kind of a paved area. Uh, and so I went ahead and I was like, well, these are nice drapes and I like that they're blush, but I wanted a little bit more drama so because this is a royal luncheon uh so i did find some gold drapes online that happen to have a little greenery swagged on them but totally optional and i figured out how to uh judge up this picture a little bit with them uh now could you diy this yourself yeah sure if you had a 10 by 10 tent and you wanted to do the drapes yourself but if you're going to bring in a rental company to put a big tent up like this just tell them you want you know gold drapes or purple drapes or whatever color drapes you want and there's a good chance they have them in stock and we'll make sure to install them and it's often part of the package depending on you know who you get it from so don't hesitate about asking for either sheer drapes or solid drapes whatever goes with the theme that you want okay this looks like a lot and it is a lot but what i did here is essentially we're recreating the boxed walls that we see like the hedge you know the hedge walls that we see over here in here and the, you know there's a lot of boxwood shaped um, topiaries and everything in here so how can we recreate that in let's say a hotel setting right where you're just like, kind of on a blank canvas on a lawn uh, maybe by the pool or something so shop wild things has these uh, 20 by 20 inch boxwood panels and they sell complete wall kits or you can make your own custom sized wall whatever you like um, along with all the other products including these uh, they're all linked down below so you can see which products that I specifically pulled for this design and just to help kind of get your brain going and looking at ideas of what you might need uh, so I hope that you find them helpful all the links down below in the description based on uh, what we're working on so right now we're working on the wall kind of photo area and so we have purple drace and this is going to be our pop of purple that we're going to bring in um, I found these slightly shiny drape and then I found, really, <laughs> it's one company and they make these curtains. They're made to be indoor curtains, not uh, like these. These curtains are meant to be draped um, in like a party event setting. These are meant for more interior residential purposes, but I liked them because they looked a little bit fancier and we kind of want that in the more forefront the purple in the back whatever you're not going to see a lot of it but the more forward facing pieces i got these beautiful drapes and then they had this waterfall of valance that went with it so i was like well obviously we need that to make it look extra fancy and then i've got some gold tassels because uh you can't have a garden party with the queen without some tassels i feel like so to add a little bit of softness and break this up i did get um this rose garland it's a bendable garland it's a little bit of a larger garland and i've used it quite a few times in different colors and this is also from shop wild things and this is their kind of peach blush color but i thought 
mixing this in with the tassels so it's going to look really pretty and drape really nicely in here just add that nice softness so what else do we need for a photo moment so i think you could totally leave it like this but if you wanted to be more queen regent style uh, we see here in the background of one of the scenes that the queen is sitting on a riser which i didn't think was necessary for this but she has a riser, she has a nice chair. I found a nice chair online that I think it's pretty comparable. Um, I thought about getting extra pillows and doing it up here, but honestly, if you're gonna be sitting on here, you don't really want the pillows to fuss with and get in the way. And this chair comes with a matching pillow, so I thought, okay, it's not part of the picture really, so we, we don't need to worry about it, but you absolutely could put a fancier pillow. But I thought this was really pretty, especially if you had um, maybe some crowns or like prop crown or something off to the side that guests could pose in and get their picture with the, you know, the crown on. But I thought you could do it, have a very uh, regal moment here with the crown and just a nice uh, ladylike pose that you would see some of the royal family posing and you know they have a very specific way they sit and everything so I thought that could be a unique photo moment here. Ta-da! So pretty nice right? Nice little uh, fancy moment here. So going back to our tent we kind of you know we're referencing our inspiration pictures here for just general not, not exactly we're making an identical layout but we're just kind of going with the vibe that they have here so you could tell there's not really a lot of sitting room there's some food spaces but there's some entertainers but everything this is more of a mix and mingle type thing which is very good for a luncheon luncheons aren't supposed to be long sit down dinners like a gala or wedding um, reception is so that's okay we're gonna keep that in mind while we're planning out this tent so I went ahead and took our boxwood wall that we made uh, and I just figured you know what we'll make a whole tent wall out of boxwood will you do this in real life i don't know but even if you did you know maybe the middle portion of it it would still be pretty nice or you could just do one of the smaller ends the more narrow ends uh, but i thought this would be a nice way to kind of block off some of the uh, maybe the hotel that you don't want to see and you could absolutely just do you know part of it like maybe from here to here and then the rest of it you could probably just do drape and talk to your rental company and it you know very well could be more affordable than running boxwood all the way across but i figured you're gonna have a regal event you might as well try and make it <laughs> extra fancy and lush and so that's why i went for a little bit more on the expensive options here uh but this is absolutely something you could scale back on and say you know save on cost so we can kind of see here uh i think this is where we see some of the food spreads that we see in the background and i thought a, a luncheon like this you're gonna have uh, probably some finger foods, you know, not super heavy foods, but something you could kind of grab and go a little bit. Uh, like I said, this isn't supposed to be a heavy meal function. It's mostly a social function, and most luncheons are. So I found a lot of great elements online for serving wear, and a lot of what I found is crystal focused. Some of it's glass, like true crystal. Some of it's acrylic. Some of it's just a regular um, general glass, but something I wanted to talk about was if you're going to spend the money and purchase this yourself, because let's say you're doing this in your backyard and you know, you're, you're maybe you're doing the food yourself and just bringing a tent in or something. This is not going to apply to you most likely if you're doing this in like a hotel setting where the hotel is doing the catering or something. But if you are going to make the effort and do this at home and spend the money yourself, I highly recommend getting things that are a little bit more universal that you could use for repeated occasions. So things in this collection especially that stand out to me that you could do is this beautiful uh, dispenser. Lemonade is very popular. They even mentioned drinking lemonade in the movies and the books. So having a beautiful lemonade thing like a dispenser like this would be very, very appropriate. But my probably my most favorite piece that I'm honestly thinking about buying for myself is this. And you're probably like, what are you talking about? This is a six in one serving piece, essentially, and it has six different combinations, but it's acrylic. And this is the same three piece, or I guess it's three pieces. Yeah, there's the base, the plate, and then the cloche on top. And depending on which way you stack them, it could be a regular cake stand with a cover, it could be a punch bowl, it could be an open cake stand, it could be a bowl with um, you know serving at the bottom or it could just be like a chips and salsa plate I thought that was just super cool 
like you could do so much with this and this is one of those pieces that you could put in your collection and it could be really really versatile and I thought that is really cool and if you look closely you can kind of tell how they did it you know how they how things are reconfigured so that I mean I might be buying that for my collection here soon but if you um wanted a more formal larger punch bowl I found this beautiful cut crystal one uh some nice tiered trays because uh we see quite a bit of the uh, design that the queen uh, is sitting next to has lots of elevations and layers and depth to it lots of tiered bowls but we also see uh this gold rimmed i'm assuming it's a cake stand with some crystal hanging on it and but not everything has crystal just a few things so i thought you know this is a good little combination here and so i just wanted to show you guys these options because i went ahead and i put them on tables on a smaller scale but you won't be able to see the details but we've got all sorts of elevations here and so let's see how they look on the table i know i said the main focal purple was going to be the backdrop and it is but i really wanted to have a pop of purple elsewhere and so i thought okay well let's do it on the buffet now this is that kind of six in one piece thing that i was talking about so you could buy multiples and have different configurations and of course our little lemonade dispenser but i wanted to show you what it looks like on something like this which is a purple polyester tablecloth that's a floor length uh, if you've seen a lot of my videos where i use poly linens this is essentially what it looks like it's you know everybody's familiar with polyester it's pretty matte it's not super shiny or anything and it's a good catch-all and it's very good for buffets because when you're done you throw it in the wash and that's it uh, I also found some, or, you know, so we have it like this, We ha and so I did the, we'll call this the savory one, this is going to be kind of like our more sweets, I guess, or maybe, eh, I don't know, it's a little bit of both, so I figured you could put some nice cheese and crackers up here, some little trifles that you could put little, I don't know, dips or something in, you know, just kind of layering things on here. So this is what it looks like, but when I went ahead and I put them next to each other, on uh, our little mock-up tent situation. I was like, oh, that looks nice. It's pretty. Uh, you could have like a whole kind of, this is almost all savory for, let's say this is our savory section, right? So I figured, okay, what, but there's some tablecloths that you can buy that are specifically meant for buffets and specifically like the pop-up tables, the rectangle tables. And I found one that happened to be a very similar purple to what we were looking at. And I thought, okay, let's see how that looks. So again putting a little bit more crystal on the dessert table because we have more risers with just a little bit of crystal we have a beautiful macaroon tower that holds i think over 100 macaroons which are you know we're literally i i'm not saying this is what they bought for it but it could be uh and we have a nice little cake stand or a cupcake stand with crystals and i thought the dessert's a little bit more of a highlight uh so we'll we'll keep that a little bit more snazzier but this i found on etsy and how great is this it's a little um cake topper and it says lady daphne's bridal ball so if you were doing this for like maybe a bridal shower luncheon or baby shower luncheon you could customize this uh for your you know whatever your personalized needs are and you could have that as your little cake topper and i thought oh that and you got a little fancy cake stand like that's really cute right so when I put this in here, so you could see these are the regular tablecloths, and then this is the more fitted look. And I, I was gonna do them all the same, but then I was like, you know, let me show you guys because if you're if your backdrop for your photo booth might be more textured and have the waves that a natural curtain would have, then maybe you want that for your tablecloth. Maybe you don't care. It doesn't really matter, but I just wanted to show you that there are options out there. So we kind of have our savories, we have our sweets, and then I went on Etsy and I found this beautiful gold lace embroidered overlay. It's on a gold satin tablecloth underneath. It has just a little piece of greenery on it, which is perfectly fine for our setting, but you will need some sort of underlay uh, tablecloth for this. I recommend a gold satin. You could do white satin, whatever you want, but I was like, these are great cocktail tables and you want cocktail tables when you're mingling. So added those into our bunch. The tablescapes for our luncheon are very, very simple, gold satin, and again, if you're renting a whole tent and all this stuff, you're probably going to get some shivari chairs or some sort of chairs. White lawn folding chairs are very common 
in hotels and they will often provide them to you at minimal or no charge, maybe just a setup fee. If you're gonna get go for the queen level, let's say, you might wanna get some shivari. So these are gold shivaris with white cushions. And then again, a little pop of purple and a very, very easy throw together baby plastic urn, so super lightweight, and then a nice greenery topiary ball in the middle, and boom, like that's that's all that you have to do, and that's how you can incorporate some of our topiary in here, and I thought that's super easy. So we'll go ahead and we'll add those in. So we layered in some tables, we got some cocktail tables, and I thought, okay, this is getting pretty good, but you know, I needed some finishing touches. So I was like, okay, let's see how this is gonna look if we're on a lawn, and you know, I'm assuming all of the tables and everything will fit underneath the tent when you do this, but just so you could see it easier, they're poking out. And I thought, how pretty would it be to add some columns with some nice uh, urns, and then those, the neutrals, remember we talked about the subtle neutrals, these are literally the columns and florals that I took out, or were, excuse me, they were seen here in this aerial shot. We could see some of them over here. So I just went ahead, took them out, and layered them on here. But uh, there's plenty, I, I link down below to where you can get urns, pillars, um, all these florals. Very easy to do silk-wise if you wanted to do them ahead of time for yourself, or if you wanted to have a florist come in. There's really not a lot of floral in this event. So it's very possible you could DIY the silks ahead of time and have that be one less thing you need to deal with. So we have a beautiful recreation of the Queen's Garden Luncheon in a more modern setting, but still with that fancy and elegant taste. We have lots of bright whites to balance out some of the more regal heavy golds and that nice pop of rich purple in here. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed making it. If you need more ideas for Bridgerton parties, whether they're weddings, parties, balls, Tuesday afternoon parties, whatever you want, I have a whole Pinterest board dedicated to all things Bridgerton parties with lots of inspiration. So that link is also down below for your reviewing pleasure. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming Bridgerton videos that we're doing in a decorate with me style. I'll be finishing out the rest of season one and then as season two releases in a few short weeks, I'll be starting on those designs so you're not going to want to miss out. Until next time, bye friends!